In this course, most of the time we have studied how to find the optimal point of convex optimization, convex objective function under some um, convex constraint set. So that is called convex optimization. So this video, I will leave you all um, convex optimization techniques that we covered during this course. So let's first recap what is convex function. So fun convex function is basically uh, looks like this. So there are many uh, definitions uh, that can describe the convex objective function. The most um, basic definition of convex function is this. When you pick um, two points, x and y, and when you uh, set lambda, a constant in between 0 and 1, then lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y um, less than or equal to lambda times fx plus 1 minus lambda times fy. For all x and y and for all lambda in between 0 and 1. Okay, so in this in this figure, uh, this inequality means when you draw a line between any two points on the uh, curve, on the function curve fx, then this line always above uh, the function value in between the two points. Okay, there is always um, some positive gap between this line and the objective function. Okay, so when we have this inequality, we say the function f is convex. Uh, we can also understand the convex function using the tangent line. For any point x prime, and then there is function value fx prime. For this given point, we can draw a tangent line that goes through this and just meet at this point. And this line function equation is fx prime plus gradient of fx prime transpose x minus x prime. That is the tangent line equation, a tangent line function. Okay, so this is a function of x, and the value of at the value at point x prime is fx prime. And the slope of the tangent line is the gradient. Okay, and when you look at this figure, we know that the objective function fx always above the tangent line. Okay, okay, there is gap and there's only one direction. Always fx bigger than the tangent line. So from this, we can say that if your function f is convex, then we have this inequality fx greater than or equal to fx prime plus gradient of fx prime transpose x minus x prime. Okay, And we can also understand the convex objective function using second derivative. If function f uh, can be uh, derived, um, can differentiable uh, two times, then using the second order derivative called Hessian, we can describe the convex property. So when you look at this curve again, uh, you can notice that uh, the slope, slope value always increase. Okay, so here the slope is negative, but uh, the negative value becomes zero and becomes positive and always increase the slope value. Okay, and actually this means Hessian of your function fx for any uh, y vector you have this. Okay, the 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 slope value always increasing to any direction means. When you pick any two vector x and y, or any two point input point x and y, uh, you have this inequality y transpose Hessian fx 
y is greater than or equal to 0 uh, for all x and y. And this means your Hessian value, Hessian matrix, sorry, Hessian matrix is positive semi definite for all x. Okay? So this is the most basic definition of convex function. And if the function f is a derivative, uh, is differentiable and then from the derivative we can define the convex function f in this way and also we can check the convexity of function f using uh, the hessian if f is uh, second differentiable differentiable two times okay so these three conditions are a very good indicator whether f is convex or not okay and also, um, there is another very important concept in our course, throughout our course was alpha strong convex and beta smooth property. Okay? So alpha strong convex D and beta smoothness was a um, um, good indicator that described the uh, the curvature of your object function f. Okay, so that basically uh, defines some guideline of uh, your objective function shape. So alpha and beta basically upper and lower bounding the curvature. Okay. So alpha strongly convex t uh, lower bounding the curvature of your object function. And beta smoothness parameter beta upper bounding the curvature of your function value. So more formally, from the tangent line and convex function property, we have uh, this. Uh, we have this inequality. So we have f x greater than or equal to f x prime plus gradient of f x prime transpose x minus x prime from the convex property and here when we have alpha strong convex t as well then we can add alpha over to x minus x prime norm square even if we add this positive value our inequality still hold when alpha strongly convex true it is because uh, the alpha strong convex t guiding the row uh, curvature of your objective function, which means uh, even if you add this um, alpha over to x minus x prime lambda square second order function, the original function f still above the the dot line. Okay, but with beta smooth property, we have another inequality. We have this opposite direction of inequality with this property fx prime plus gradient of fx prime transpose x minus x prime. This is tangent line plus beta over 2 x minus x prime lambda square. So when you add uh, this beta over 2 x minus x prime lambda square, the second order function then this dotted line above your objective function f. Okay, so this is alpha strong convexity and beta smoothness with convex function f. Okay. And also convex z is very important for our course. So what is convex z? We have a um, convex set has this shape. So when you pick any two points inside a uh, set X, so if X and Y both point belong to the set X, then if X is convex set, then lambda X plus one minus lambda Y also belong to the convex set X. So in this figure, basically when you draw line between x and y, any point on the line also member of convex set x. 
Okay. Right. And with this convex set, we have another definition of convex function f. So basically, let x star is the solution. So what is the solution means? f x star is equal to minimum among the con constraint set x with respect to object function f. Okay. Then we have this inequality: gradient of f x star transpose x minus x star. This is always positive, non-negative. Uh, how can you show this? Mm, I think there are many different ways to show this inequality. And in this video, I want to use Taylor expansion. Taylor expansion. So from Taylor expansion, we have fx star plus gradient of fx star transpose x minus x star plus 1 over 2 x minus x star uh, transpose hcn of f x prime some x points belong to your constraint set and x minus x star from the tail expansion we can say that there exists such x prime this equation hold okay and from the convex t we know that this is always positive that is fine but we also know that when x minus x star go to zero so the known value x minus x star go to zero this value much fastly go to zero because there is a two x minus x star term so you know when you compare an x and x square when x go to zero x square much fastly converts to zero okay so when x close to zero then x is much much bigger than x square when you when you uh, divide x by x square that is one over x so when x go to zero x is much 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 bigger than x square okay we will use this property in many different fields and in many theories so uh, i think this is very important trick in many theories so please uh, keep in your mind anyway so because this uh, value converts to zero much much fastly we just need to focus on this term especially when x minus x star go to zero okay then when uh, there exists x point such that uh, this inequality hold gradient of f x star transpose x minus x star is negative okay then basically this value is negative and the value is much 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 smaller than the absolute value of this which means we can say that this entire term is negative when x minus x star is very close to zero with this direction okay so which means which indicate that fx star is not an uh, optimal point and but we want to set x star is the optimal point minimum of fx among all the uh, element inside your constraint set okay so that is contradict of the definition of x star so which means uh, your uh, gradient of f x star transpose x minus x star always uh, greater than or equal to zero. This cannot be negative. Okay. If there exists x point such that this is negative, then we can show that there exists x point uh, such that f x less than f x star. Right, so this is another definition of convex function. So for the convex optimization problem, we have studied gradient descent algorithm most of the time. 
gradient descent algorithm is very simple but powerful and it is um, easy to analyze compared to other approach okay so this course we have uh, discussed many different uh, condition of objective function and we have um, analyzed the convergence speed and what is the good step size what kind of variant of gradient descent algorithm we can utilize so that we can um, achieve or we can find the optimal point very quickly. Since we know that uh, the direction uh, the object function decreases from gradient, well, we can um, utilize the gradient direction to minimize the objective function f. So from any point, when we uh, have gradient vector, uh, basically the opposite direction of gradient vector tells us the direction decreasing the objective function. Okay, so when we update xt plus 1 is equal to xt minus gamma gradient of fxt, uh, this update maybe uh, move your point to somewhere like this and we can expect some, some decreasing of uh, function value. Of course here this step size, so this is step size, this, the step size is very important. We have to set the step size not too big, not too small. So, uh, in our theory, when we set the step size gamma is equal to 1 over square root to t, or if we know the end time when you set 1 over square root to capital T, uh, then of course in our theory we have another constant here. So we build a theory using this step size uh, over l square root t here i and l l uh, indicate the radius of your starting point and l is uh, is resistance continuous constant anyway when we set gamma is equal to uh, 1 over square root t times some constants comes from your function shape then we can guarantee that fx bar minus fx star so here x star is the optimal point less than or equal to some constant times 1 over square root capital T and here x bar is some um, empirical average of your update sequence here so why we have to use x bar instead of the last point xt why not xt uh, because uh, with this um, update rule Basically, we cannot guarantee always decreasing property. fxt plus 1 uh, minus Fx, uh, fxt less than or equal to fxt. If we, have, if we have this property, then we can say, okay, the gradient descent can decrease the function value at every uh, update. But here, not yet, we have this property. Um, so it is possible to have with the step size gamma sometimes your update is too much so your function value can um, increase right so this direction is definitely a decreasing direction for this uh, very small local area but this does not guarantee when you update to a uh, wrong distance this does not guarantee the function value um, is less than the previous function value, okay? Like this. Uh, in practice, especially when your function is uh, like this very asymmetric, like this, basically the step size is very difficult to control. And for instance, uh, if your current position is this, because the gradient very rapid at here so with very tiny uh, step size you 
even if we have very step, small step size, tiny step size, maybe the update is very big, very long distance. So maybe the next position like this. So uh, with high property, maybe we have um, some increasing function value. But this area, this area, the slope is very small. So even if we have very large step size, uh, it is very likely your update length is too tiny to convert to the optimal point here. Okay. So that that was a um, difficult point uh, when we optimize. Even if the function the function is convex, it is difficult to optimize. Okay. Right. So um, sometimes the convex objective function does not guarantee very nice convergence property. So we have to uh, restrict some um, some shape of your objective function so that we have very nice convergence behavior. So we first use uh, beta smoothness. When we know our uh, objective function is beta smooth, uh, we have very nice step size. Okay. So in the theory, we know that when the objective function is beta smooth, 1 over beta is very nice step size. Okay, so why? So basically, when you have this objective function and beta smooth, then this means when you draw um, beta over 2, x lambda square at this point uh, this curvature always um, bigger than the original function okay so more, more precisely let's say this is function fx and let's say this is a function fx term and this uh, second order function is fx star plus beta over 2 x minus x term lambda square and when you have beta smooth property we have this for all x okay and this property make very nice uh, Thing for our gradient descent update rule. So more precisely, for any um, for any x t point with function value f x t, uh, we have the second order approximation f x sorry f x t plus gradient of f x t transpose x minus x t plus beta over 2 x minus x t um, square is greater than or equal to fx for any x okay so for this point from the beta smoothness we can draw some second order function that um, is bigger than original function fx okay and the gradient descent update rule with step size uh, 1 over beta is equivalent with argument over x for this second order approximation when you compute argument of this second order polynomial function then xt plus 1 exactly equal to xt minus 1 over beta 
gradient fx t. Okay, so gradient update rule find this minimum point of your second order approximation by using beta smoothness, which defined from the point xt fxt. Okay, so there are two very important property of this second order approximation. The first one is the second order approximation and um, fx share the same function value point at xt. Okay. And the second one is uh, this second order approximation, this one, always bigger than the original function f. Right. So when you find the optimal point of this second order approximation, then we can say that this value is less than this. Okay. And this value bigger than this, right? So we can guarantee that every time we can decrease the function value using gradient descent when we set gamma equal to 1 over beta, right? And also another very uh, important property is that uh, with this update rule, always the updating point here cannot um, reach to, uh, cannot cross this line. So this line um, drew boundary at fx star. So x comma x star comma fx star. So this gradient descent update rule with step size 1 over beta never cross this line, which means this update rule does not make zigzag behavior. Okay. So this property is a uh, very important. Okay, and why we believe uh, 1 over beta is very nice step size. Okay, and also actually we uh, find 1 over beta step size by optimizing the inequalities from the uh, proof. So when you go back to uh, how to show, go back to the slide, uh, how to show the convergence speed of the gradient descent algorithm, with step size gamma. Um, there we optimize the step size gamma to make the, the update, amount of update is optimized. Okay. <coughs> right. <coughs> so, anyway, we have gamma times when you compare gamma times gradient of fxt norm and um, xt minus x star we uh, can say that this is always bigger than this update length so because the update length always less than or equal to xt minus x star the distance to the optimal point uh, we can say that there is no zigzag behavior when we set gamma equal to 1 over beta. Okay, and from this, uh, we ha have this fxt plus 1 is less than or equal to fxt. More precisely, we have fxt minus fxt plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over 2 beta. Uh, gradient of fx t norm the scale. Okay, and using this property, we have fx capital T minus fx star is less than or equal to some constant times 1 over capital T. When we learn capital T number of iterations, uh, we have 1 over 
capital T error. Okay, distance to the optimal point. Okay, and one another remark here is now we have fx capital T instead of x bar. Why? Because from this, from beta smooth property and very nice step size 1 over beta, we now have that this property. We can say that every time we decrease the objective function value, so the last time function value is the minimum point among our sequence value. Okay. Uh, but the beta smoothness does not always make very nice uh, convergence speed. Okay. 1 over capital T is very nice, but the constants from here is very huge, then 1 over capital T uh, still very slow. We need a lot of iteration to make uh, our desired performance. Okay. And why? Uh, let me give you an example. If your object function looks like this, uh, because of this area, your beta have some constant value. For instance, in this case, beta is 1 over 2, let's say. But this area, almost flat. So uh, basically, if you just consider this interval or this interval, then the beta smoothness, beta parameter, nearly 0. Okay. And Actually, uh, this scenario is not good for gradient descent algorithm with constant step size 1 over beta. Why? Recall it when you start from here, the 1 over beta step size, so 1 over beta is just 2, uh, it's very small. You, you basically uh, move just a constant amount. Okay? So, when you assume that um, the starting point is very far from the x star, then we need a lot of iteration uh, to be uh, close to here. Okay? Basically, in this scenario, gradient of fx and fx minus fx star, which clearly no correlation. There is no correlation between gradient of fx and fx minus fx star. Although there is a huge gap between current function value and the optimal function value, still the gradient is just a very small constant. And in this scenario, in this case, the gradient descent with constant step size require a lot of iteration to be close to uh, optimal point. And basically in that case, we have very huge constants in front of here. And so this theorem also tells us we need a lot of iteration. So from this, because of this issue, uh, we also introduce another uh, condition to uh, say very fast convergence or exponentially fast or linear convergence late, let's say, using alpha strong convex condition. Okay, when we have alpha strongly convex, then the original objective function have upper bound curvature and row 1 curvature. Okay? And this row 1 curvature actually make uh, when you uh, when your current point x t uh, is far from the optimal point x star and because of this row 1 the your gradient becomes larger as you move away from the optimal point x star. Okay, 
Still, the one of the beta step size is the optimal. One of the beta is still very nice. We can always uh, decrease the function value, and there is no zigzag behavior. Still, one of beta is very good. With alpha, but with alpha strong convexity, we have one more thing. That is the function gap fx minus fx star also guide us the scale of gradient. Our gradient norm is proportional to the function gap. So when we move away from uh, optimal point, our gradient also huge. Okay, then even if our starting point is very far from the optimal point, here, because we have very huge gradient uh, ranks, we jump a lot. Okay. So even if we uh, have a huge distance to optimal point at the beginning, we can quickly move toward the uh, uh, optimal point. So the result was xt plus 1 minus x star square is always less than or equal to 1 minus r over beta times xt minus x star from the square. So we can say that the distance exponentially decrease as you learn more iteration. And so from this we have xt minus x0 num squared is less than or equal to oh no, no, xt minus x star num squared is less than or equal to 1 minus alpha over beta tau t x0 minus x star num squared. Okay? So very fastly, the distance to the optimal decrease. Right. So up to now, I have summarized the case. There is no constraint. And we also studied a uh, convex constraint case. So we have to have a point inside of a constraint set, let's say x. So here, the problem is our gradient update can be outside of your constraint. So when xt plus 1 is outside of constraint set, now we have you know, invalid point. So we have to uh, move xt plus 1 to the uh, inside of our constraint set, or we have to make something so that our path do uh, our path does not go outside but you know change the direction so that uh, the xt plus one still inside your constraint set always or we have to make some a uh, policy so that at some point your uh, xt value can go outside um, the constraint set, but eventually, in the end, the trajectory come back to your constraint set. So there are three possible policies. Every time, move xt plus 1 to the inside xt plus 1, inside of your constraint set. And the second policy is, using some external force or some technique, xt plus 1 just um, move inside your constraint set or we can make some rule so that eventually or in the end the trajectory uh, uh, converts to some point inside your constraint set okay the first one was projection so projection uh, just uh, compute this one. So every time we find argmin in your constraint set 
from your um, value y. So basically, in this case, we define y t plus one. That is um, gradient update point, gradient descent update point. Uh, when y t plus one is outside of your constraint set, then we update x t plus one using this projection rule. So that x t plus one is inside your constraint set. But not any point, the closest point to the y t plus 1. Okay, so the rule is first just run the gradient descent and find the y t plus 1, and then find x t plus 1, that is the closest point inside constraint set to the y t plus 1, the updated point. So that was the first policy when you have constraint set and the proof of the algorithm is almost identical with the unconstrained version and the convergence speed and all the behavior also almost identical the only uh, problem of this projection method is how to compute the closest point um, when your constraint set is very simple and easy to deal with, then maybe this um, argmin operation is very easy to compute. But some case, this is um, almost impossible to find the argmin value every time, or it require a lot of computations. Okay, so people invent another method as well. It's called barrier method. Barrier methods um, introduce some additional cost function. For instance, like this, log minus gx, when you have <coughs> minimum objective function f for the set x having gx value less than or equal to zero. Uh, when your, uh, when this function gx is convex function, then this constraint set is also convex constraint set. And using this g function and log function, this additional cost function have, uh, sorry, this additional cost function have this shape. Okay. So this part make your trajectory always inside uh, of your constraint set. So basically, this make from any xt point because of this additional cost function, additional barrier function, your xt plus one always inside constraint set. This cost function always guarantee the updated point inside constraint set. That is second possible solution for your um, constraint version of convex optimization problem. Uh, but the, the issue of this barrier method, uh, basically this cost function uh, uh, disturb or some, some make some error of uh, you, uh, to the original object function fx so the the barrier method sometimes cannot converge to the solution x star but converts to some uh, another point okay that is not uh, what we want uh, so to remove such error we can of course, you use perfect barrier function, so zero value for constraint set and infinity value for all point x not belong to constraint set. Then this cost function naturally make a 
original 2fx for this area and infinite value for outside of um, constraint set. So this burial method becomes um, perfect uh, you know, alternative for your gradient descent object function. Okay, so using this uh, fx true function plus additional cost function cx, and if cx follow uh, this shape, then we can convert to x star, and that's good. But again, uh, this uh, approach is not perfect. Uh, this function shape actually very hard to deal with sometimes. So, you know, this is not good solution. And this type of approach, this type of cost function is differentiable. So, maybe we can easily find the solution. But the issue for this type of variable function is because the shape of variable function is not perfect. There is some distortion, this range, and this is not perfect infinite gradient. So, you know, <clears throat> sometimes uh, the converging point of this ob original object function plus cost function can be um, far from our desired convergence point. Okay. So we have considered third approach, Lagrangian dual uh, approach. So Lagrangian dual approach basically make uh, your convergence trajectory can be outside several times, but eventually it go back to some point inside your constraint set. So how to define the Lagrange dual and Lagrange uh, dual problem. So when you have original problem this minimum fx with a constraint of fine constraint hix equal to zero there are many i and convex constraint g sorry gjx less than or equal to zero for j there are many j then we can define Lagrange dual function x mu lambda with Lagrange multiplier mu n lambda which is fx plus i12 m mu i h i x plus j12 n lambda j g j x that was Lagrange dual function and then we find L function, this is function of mu n lambda, which is the minimum value, x mu lambda. And note that there is no constraint. And then the Lagrange dual problem solve this problem, max over mu n lambda, L mu lambda okay and there is constraint lambda j must be non-negative okay so that, that was um Lagrange dual problem and basically here it is not easy to find the solution, right? And also, this is also not easy to find the solution just by a closed formication. That is almost impossible. So again, we have to utilize kind of um, gradient descent rule. So basically, we have to find xt plus 1 every time using gradient descent xt minus gamma x, so the step size for x, gradient with respect to x, lambda x 
mu lambda and also we have to update mu and lambda as well mu t minus step size for mu gradient with respect to mu sorry step size for lambda um, gradient with respect to lambda okay uh, but here another important remark is uh, the Lagrange dual problem is concave maximize problem we have to maximize concave function this dual problem this dual function actually concave function so this problem is concave optimization problem concave maximization problem and for this concave maximization problem we have to use gradient ascent rule not gradient descent rule because we have to increase function value okay so uh, here Basically, this part is kind of barrier function. Okay, this barrier function enforces your trajectory to be inside constraint set. But initially, with initial mu i and lambda j, the barrier function is not perfect, so it allows to be outside of your um, constraint set. But after many iteration, mu and lambda will learn x whether x is outside your constraint set or inside of your constraint set. So, so mu and lambda adaptively control this variable function so that in the end, after sufficient number of iteration, x t be inside your constraint set, and also. After sufficient number of iteration, this additional barrier doesn't make any distribution to your original object function f. The convergence point exactly the x star, the optimal point of your original problem. Okay? So, Lagrange dual approach is powerful. Okay, so for the constraint set, we can use projection. That is very nice. The analysis is almost identical, but the problem is sometimes this projection approach, uh, pro projection uh, operator is not easy to implement. Varial method, good. With good uh, varial function, we can uh, make, we can find the solution. Especially with this perfect uh, barrier function, we can always find the solution. But again, with this perfect barrier function, uh, sometimes it is very difficult to find the gradient. And actually, there is no gradient at this point. This is not differentiable. So when you consider uh, differentiable barrier function, and then the differential barrier function can make some distortion to your original object function so the your finding solution can be different with the true object to uh, optimal point Lagrangian dual approach can resolve this issue which can um, adaptively control the barrier function part so that in the end eventually your trajectory converts to the true optimal solution Right, and then we have discussed uh, proximal gradient. Proximal gradient uh, very related to barrier method. <clears throat> Basically, the gradient descent approach can be written like this: arg min y f x t plus gradient of f x t transpose y minus x t plus 1 over 2 gamma 
y minus x t lambda square. Okay, so this is uh, original gradient descent, and the proximal gradient descent. Just add h x function to here. Okay, so what is the meaning of h x? Equally, let's go back to area of method. We optimize not fx, we optimize fx plus some cost function. Let's say hx is the cost function. Okay. Cost function, if this is differentiable, that's fine. We just compute the gradient every iteration and then update your point using the gradient direction. But in many cases, hx, the cost function, is not differentiable. The perfect barrier function, or many times we use L1 norm cost function, which is not differentiable. Okay? So in that case, instead of just um, vanilla pure gradient descent algorithm, proximal gradient descent is more easy to compute. Okay? So here we just write down the original definition of GD for this fx function and just add the additional cost to here because we are trying to argument so the additional cost function also be considered when we finding this argument solution okay Right, so every time xt plus 1 is arc mean gradient, we can rewrite uh, this argument equation to this gamma over 2 gradient of fxt lambda square plus gradient of xt transpose y minus xt plus 1 over 2 gamma y minus xt lambda square plus hy so this and this a little bit different I replace this fxt by gamma over 2 gradient of fxt lambda square that is absolutely fine because we are trying to find argument not minimum value and fxt and gamma over 2 gradient of fxt norms square, they are just constant with respect to y. When you change y, they are just fixed. Okay, so we can simply replace this by this. And why I replace this by this? Because when you write this, this exactly 1 over 2 gamma y minus xt minus gamma gradient of fx t normed square plus hy okay so this is um, the, the, the form in our lecture slide okay so this is proximal gradient descent and this is very useful especially when we have non-differentiable additional cost function but again, this is not easy to find. The argument of 1 over 2 gamma y minus x t minus gamma gradient of f x t norm square plus h y. This is not easy to compute. Okay. <clears throat> then we have discussed mirror descent as well. What is mirror descent? Gradient descent algorithm uh, basically based on Euclidean distance. Okay. Again, the the definition of gradient descent can be write this argument y gradient of f x t transpose y minus x t plus one over two gamma y minus x t in the square. So basically the gradient descent rule 
consider the distance, the updated length in terms of Euclidean distance. Okay. But Euclidean distance usually good, but in some cases Euclidean distance is not good measure. Okay, controlling the the sequence of your update. Okay, for instance, if your function uh, control looks like this, very very narrow, like this. Okay, the small update to this direction is very huge, but update to this direction is it's not sensitive at all. Okay, you can move to this direction very freely. Your huge update to this direction does not change too much, but very tiny update to this direction change a lot. Euclidean distance cannot uh, consider this kind of phenomena. But with some other distance metric, you can wait more to this direction and you can wait very uh, you can wait more to this direction and you can wait very small uh, amount to this direction. Okay? So for mirror descent approach, people introduce uh, Bragman divergence to this equation. So just uh, remove this part and replace this part by 1 over comma Bregman divergence y and xt. And what is Bregman divergence? This is uh, pi x minus pi y minus gradient pi y transpose x minus y. And Bregman divergence can be defined with any convex differential function. Right. So in the previous page, I have explained when we have this kind of uh, object function contour, uh, we might have very difficult time. The, with some step size. If we have a very tiny step size, then we can prevent zigzag behavior, but uh, update length is too small. But if we set uh, some large step size, then uh, we may have very heavy zigzag behavior, which also make very slow convergence. Uh, this kind of control can appear when we have very large kappa value. Kappa is defined uh, beta over alpha, and this is called condition number. And basically, uh, so here beta is beta smoothness and alpha is alpha strong convex property. And when we have this kappa condition number, the convergence speed uh, is proportional to 1 over 1 minus kappa capital T. Okay, and so if kappa is huge, then this value grows to zero and the conversion speed becomes very slow. Okay, so when beta and alpha is very unbalanced, beta is much bigger than alpha, we uh, usually suffer from this zigzag behavior. So uh, people think uh, how to um, resolve this uh, zigzag behavior. And one possible approach is um, averaging the sequence. So when we averaging the update sequence, maybe the uh, update sequence can become more flattened, and this can uh, speed up the convergence to the optimal point. That is momentum method, or Nastrop accelerated GD. Okay. So
So momentum method uh, basically update xt plus 1 is equal to xt minus step size gradient of x fxt plus the momentum constant mu times xt minus xt minus 1. So which basically add previous update, right? Okay. And this is called momentum method. It's kind of averaging uh, the update sequence that can make more flattened convergence trajectory. And this momentum method uh, update uh, uh, gradient rule and then add previous update ranks. Let's draw gradient descent rule real different, which update yt plus 1 is equal to yt plus square root 2 kappa minus 1 square root 2 kappa plus 1 yt minus yt minus 1 minus 1 over beta gradient of f <coughs> this term to here okay so natural accelerated gd method first compute the momentum part the averaging part and then apply gradient descent rule to find the yt plus 1. That is the main difference between a momentum and astro accelerated GD. Momentum methods, sorry, momentum methods first compute GD and then uh, compute momentum. Astro accelerated GD first compute momentum and then apply GD. Okay, compute the, compute the gradient vector after update your momentum rule. <clears throat> and this constant uh, is valid for a mu part here, and this is actually optimized uh, hyperparameter for momentum part. And in practice, because it is very difficult to know what is kappa value, uh, we basically just set this value just um, hyperparameter mu, but uh, usually. Uh, but in theory, this, this mu value is the optimal constant for the momentum part. And with this optimal constant, we can uh, speed up. So we can make 1 minus 1 over uh, square root 2 kappa part to capital T instead of 1 minus 1 over kappa part to T. So that uh, improved the conversion speed. Okay, and in this course, we also study Newton's method, which um, use Hessian matrix, Hess inverse of Hessian matrix, so that we can find more uh, direct direction to the optimal point. And this make much faster convergence. But the problem is this Hessian inverse matrix is not uh, allowed in practice, especially when we have uh, many uh, control variables. For instance, in Euroled talk, we have a lot of control parameters. So inverse of Hessian matrix is not uh, possible to compute. We also uh, study Frank Loop method, which basically compute yt value, just arg mean, constraint set, gradient of fxt transpose y, and then update xt plus 1 is equal to 1 minus gamma t, xt plus gamma t, yt plus uh, yt. Okay? So this is useful when uh, this computation is very easy to you know, compute. And then we have um, a good uh, solution after many iterations. Okay. We have analyzed the conversion speed. And we uh, have studied one example uh, where this Frank loop update rule is efficient. And also we have 
studied coordinate descent algorithm Um, so especially when uh, uh, your objective function is coordinate wise smooth and its axis have different smooth beta smooth parameter uh, using that we can uh, uh, speed up the gradient descent rule okay so these three methods sometimes useful and sometimes not but good to know all right and SGD is very related to recent deep learning mechanism because uh, we have a lot of parameter. Also, we have a lot of data point. It is impossible to calculate gradient for the full loss function for millions of millions of data point. So usually we randomly sample subset of training data point and estimate the gradient. So instead of uh, compute the exact gradient vector, we usually approximate this vector using some randomness so that the expectation of GT is equal to the full gradient. And then update XT plus 1 using the gradient descent rule like this the performance SGD really depend on the variance or the, the L2 norm uh, expectation so the performance very depend on this value if the variance is high which means uh, if we have a lot of noise to estimate the full gradient by using some randomness, then of course your trajectory has many noise and your trajectory cannot converge to the optimal solution even if you run millions of billions of updates. Okay? So we have to reduce the variance. We have to reduce variance by uh, two different approaches. One way is we can decrease the step size, then the update ranks uh, will have uh, less variance, and then we can converge to the exact solution as gamma go to zero and as the time go to infinity. The second approach is um, we can add some um, other random variable that is correlated with GT gradient, stochastic gradient vector. For instance, uh, algorithm SVLG, Saga, or some other method, they basically uh, update rule not only use GT stochastic gradient, gradient vector, but also introduce some other random vector, let's say YT, and then uh, add some expectation of YT. So that when you uh, take expectation to this whole part, they are still a gradient of f uh, x t because uh, the expectation of this is equal to this, and that will be erased. And also, we actually define this y t so that y t has some positive correlation of G with g t. Then the variance of this part will decrease because uh, the oscillation of GT will be compensated by the oscillation of uh, YT because they are positively correlated. So that is uh, one possible uh, technique that can reduce the variance. And reducing variance means we can improve the performance of SGD. And even we can uh, improve the convergence speed as well. Okay, so that, that is very widely um, used in machine learning part.